Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. At this point, you can go ahead and start making some guesses about the solutions and then compare your results to mine at the end. So we have x to the power x squared minus 1 equals 7 to the power x squared minus 1. And we're going to be looking for x values, obviously, right? What else could we look for? Now, to be able to solve an equation like this, there's a couple different things you can do. For example, you could just log both sides. Let's go ahead and do it. So if we log both sides, we're going to get the following. Log, and this is base 10, by the way, when I don't write the base. x to the power x squared minus 1 equals log 7 to the power x squared minus 1. Now, logging both sides is helpful because when you don't and just look at the exponential, there's a few different cases that you have to consider and you have to make sure that you consider all of them. But still with this, we have to be very careful because exponential equations can be tricky. Now, the next thing I should be doing is using properties of logs and that's actually why we log both sides because we want to get rid of the variable exponents. When you have variable exponents, then you gotta be extra careful. So. We can go in and bring these down to the front. Bring these to the front. That's going to give us x squared minus 1 log x equals x squared minus 1 log 7. And at this point, it's pretty natural to just cancel out x squared minus 1. Like, okay, let's just go ahead and scratch it out. Uh-oh, that's not good. Don't do that. Uh, no, no. That's a big no-no. Why? I'll tell you in a little bit. When we find the solutions, you'll have a better idea. Now, we don't want to do it. Rather, we want to bring everything on one side and then set the whole thing equal to zero. Let's go ahead and do it. We have x squared minus 1 times log x minus x squared minus 1 times log 7 equals zero. That's good. Now, x squared minus 1 is a common factor, so we can take it out. Let's do it. And inside, we're going to get log x minus log 7, right? Now, this is nice because it gives us two factors which we can set equal to 0 and solve. So x squared minus 1, for example, if you think about it. If you set x squared minus 1 equal to 0, you get x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. Now, let's go back to where we could cancel x squared minus 1, but didn't. This explains why. If you cancel out the x squared minus 1, you're basically dividing both sides by 0, which is not always a bad thing because the other factors will take care of the solution, but you're going to be losing some of the solutions. Sometimes you square both sides and you gain extra solutions or extraneous solutions, and sometimes by canceling out terms, you lose solutions, and you don't want to do that. So. 1 and negative 1 are solutions. And you can easily check them out if you go ahead and write the original problem and replace x with 1 or negative 1, let's say 1. 1 to the power 0 equals 7 to the power 0 because they are both equal to 1. Or negative 1 to the power 0 is the same thing as 7 to the power 0 because they are both equal to 1. So both 1 and negative 1 check out. Great. But are those the only solutions? The answer is no. What is another solution? Well, we didn't check the other factor, so we're not done yet. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. What does that tell us? Log x minus log 7 equals 0. Now, this means log x equals log 7. And this naturally implies x equals 7. Wow, we got ourselves another solution. Are you satisfied? Is three solutions good enough for you? Well, here's the thing. We've got to make sure that there are no other solutions, right? And obviously, we could also kind of verify this with a graph, but I don't think I made a graph for this function because the graph was really, I don't kind of ugly. I don't know. It didn't fit the screen. That's why. So we're going to do something else. One of the things that you should be careful about when solving these kinds of equations is, obviously, we checked 1 and negative 1, but we didn't check the 7. Why would you check it, right? Well, check it because it's going to help you find another solution. Uh-oh, I just said it. Oopsies. Okay, so here's how. 
when you solve this equation, you got x equals 7 as a solution, correct? Yes. But now, you can substitute it and let's see what happens. If you replace x with 7, does that really work, right? It may not. 7 to the power x squared minus 1, which is going to be 48, equals 7 to the power 48. Wow, amazing, right? Beautiful. It works, yes, of course. Because when the exponents are the same, the bases can also be the same. Exception, when the exponents are 0, then the bases don't have to be the same. And we already take we've already taken care of it by using one and negative one so that case is out now we're kind of looking uh, focusing on the base but we could also say the following if the exponents are equal do the bases always have to be equal if they're not the exponents are not zero so in other words we have a to the power c and b to the power c they're equal but c is not zero in this case uh, is a equals b the only solution so we kind of have to think about it. Can we find another situation where a and b are different, but the outcome is the same? And that kind of comes from the fact that 48 is an even number. What is that supposed to mean? It means that when you have an even power, you can change the base and still get a true statement. How? Negative 7 to the power 48 is the same thing as 7 to the power 48. Why? Because 48th power will have a negative factor 48 times, so the product will be positive. The negatives are going to cancel out in pairs, so this is true, which means x equals negative 7 is also a solution. Why? Because if you replace x with negative 7, you get negative 7 to the power 48, like this, equals 7 to the power 48, and this is true. Make sense? Great. So we get ourselves another solution. x equals negative 7. So in total, how many solutions did we get? 4. Let's go ahead and list them. Negative 7, negative 1, 1, and 7. Is this always going to work? So here's another expansion on this problem. Did If we did have something like x to the power x squared minus 2, and let's say something like 7 to the power x squared minus 2, would this also be satisfied by negative 7? Think about this, and then hopefully you'll find an answer. Okay, great. So you can generalize this too. Is there another way to approach this problem? Let's go ahead and quickly take a look. So we have x to the power x squared minus 1 equals 7 to the power x squared minus 1. Now, you can think of it this way too. We, we have... We have the bases that are equal, x equals 7, right? And then the exponents are the same. So from here, x equals 7 quickly follows. So you could probably think of it this way. If x is even, so here's a, here's a scenario that I should probably be checking. If this is even, then... 7 to the power x squared minus 1 is the same thing as negative 7 to the power x squared minus 1. And in this case, it's the same thing as x to the power x squared minus 1, so x equals negative 7 also works. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.